the New York show. I am Michael Pinter, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. Now, got a question about double close versus assignments, and I was about to just send some older videos on it, but the truth is my opinion and my experience with those things has changed recently, so I want to talk about it. Um, so let's talk about it. Now, what, what do those things mean? And I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages to both, uh, why they're different in New York. So let me explain. Um, you know, when you're wholesaling, you're basically taking a contract with a seller and I'm getting a lot of texts, I'm sorry. And you are either assigning that contract or you may double close that deal. So. Let's just take some examples, I'll explain what they mean. So if I am in contract on something for 400,000 and I find a buyer for 440, I can assign the contract to the new buyer for 440,000 and then that buyer will take my place. So it's A to B on B, A is the seller, and then a B to C assignment where really C, the new buyer, takes my place. Or I can double close, which means I do a contract from myself to the seller, um, and that's A to B, B to C, same thing. Now, so what I've said in the past, and I, I'm, I stand by this, is in general in New York, you are going to assign. Assigning is usually a better way to do it, and really for a couple of reasons. Now, the reason why anybody would even double close is usually the reason why you double close is because you don't want all the parties to know what price you're in and out from. So. The thinking is that if I'm buying, take, let's keep it with the example. So I'm buying something for 400,000 and then I find the buyer for 440. The thing is, well, the seller may freak out and say, I don't want to sell it to you. Or the buyer may freak out and say, I don't want to buy it from you. But one of the greatest parts of doing business in New York, and there are a lot of challenges to doing business in New York, but one of the greatest parts of doing business in New York is that contracts are very hard, just like they're very hard to get into, they're impossible to get out of. So. I tell the story a lot, but I'm gonna keep uh, repeating it. One of my first deals, if not my first deal I ever wholesaled, was a big monster Grand Slam deal. Well over $100,000 in assignment fees. And the seller was a real, shall we say, complaining guy who really thought he was getting gypped. And I, not on this deal, but in general in life, he was upset. And he, he, was, and he was a militant guy, so I felt so I asked my attorney, I go, listen, I'm scared that this guy's gonna see I'm making $120,000 on this and he's gonna bolt. And my attorney said to me, he may be pissed off, but he can't sell the property to anybody else and he can't sell, and he can't not sell it to you. Because in New York, when you get into contract, right, and remember, there's almost always an attorney for the seller, attorney for the buyer, which is a pain in the ass sometimes, the, the, uh, the terms of the contract in New York are very clear, right? Not only if, if a buyer wants to buy and a seller doesn't want to sell, doesn't perform as we say, the buyer can do two things. So the buyer can A, file a list pendants on the property. I gotta take the Southern State West, I hope I don't lose you. They can file a list pendants on the property, which is the same as if it's a mortgage and foreclosure, which will prevent the seller from selling to anyone else ever until the list pendants is cleared. And the buyer can sue the seller for specific performance, which means the entire purchase price. That means even if you were gonna make 40,000, in this case you can set, you can sue the sell it for $400,000 and you'll win. And what sometimes I get asked from people out of New York, but how does a seller know that? And the seller knows it because he's represented by an attorney. We'll tell him that right away. So there's le certainly less of a reason to ever think about double closing, but also because the closing costs are so incredibly high in New York, double closing can cost a lot of, thousand, a lot of money, right? It can cost seven or $8,000. It's crazy because you have transfer tax, you have to pay title fees, you have to pay recording fees. It can be a lot. You know, if you're making twenty-five thousand, thirty thousand on assignment to pay six thousand dollars in closing costs is absurd. So both of those reasons make it unlikely to happen in New York. Now there are situations where it makes sense, where I, where you don't want people to know, or the seller's got other properties and you don't want the seller to know on this one that you assigned it because you wanted to sell your other properties, for example. Um, so you can double close. Now the, the advantages of double closing, like I said, are that the parties don't know how much everybody's making. But the disadvantage of double closing, and I didn't think about this, and I just got to confirm, is you don't really have an enforceable contract, right? So someone's selling me 123 Main Street. So John Smith is selling me 123 Main Street. I go into contract at 123 Main Street. If I then write a contract to sell 123 Main Street to Frank Johnson, and he wants to walk, 
he's going to see title and he's going to know I don't own it. Now, assuming he wants it and I'm assuming he'll go through with it. But the bottom line is I don't really have an enforceable contract, right? You have an agreement, but I, I certainly can't take him to court and say, you have to buy this property for me because I don't own the property. So something to think about right now, again, in the loosey-goosey world of the other 49 states where people get into contract on a on a to- piece of toilet paper and get out of contract when they change their mind, these things don't even come up. But I am very, very used to having basically no contract fallout, right? Because sellers cannot change their mind and no contract fallout on the buy side because these guys don't. I mean, I had a buyer once that I kept this, with this change of mind, I, I kept his deposit. So if you're going to double close in New York, you've got to understand that you can really get screwed because if that guy doesn't want to close you really have no he really has limited legal obligation to close now obviously nine times out of ten 99 of 100 times the guy is agreeing to the price he wants to close but you still have to be concerned with that you know i tell a lot of sellers sometimes sellers that are in a rush and i say listen you can list a house you just have to understand the risks of listing listing a house because almost every contract has a mortgage contingency on it. Every end user, buyer, you know, person who's going to move into a house has a mortgage contingency in it. That really is a get out of contract free card. And you need to understand what that means. That means you can be three months into this process. You have to, let's say, move, right? You are desperate to get this guy to finally close and he can just say, sorry, I got denied and walk away. That sucks, right? And one of the beautiful things that I've been accustomed to is that nobody can walk away you know, on, uh, on, unenforceable contracts. But when you double close, you really have a contract where the guy can go, sorry, kiss my ass, keep my deposit, and I'm walking away. I don't want to keep your deposit, right? I want you to close on it. So it's something to think about when you think about double closing. Um, Also, most of the time in New York, you're going to have to pay significant fees to double close. So you have to think about whether you want to double close or not. I personally recommend you don't unless there's a specific reason to do it. I want the best deal I ever did was five properties from one seller that I uh, double closed on to another, to one buyer. And I did that because there were another two properties and I didn't really want the seller to know about it. Um, but it cost me $40,000 to do. Now, it was the best deal I ever did. So I was buying them for $750,000 and I had a buyer at nine seventy five. dollars But I made $40,000 less than that. Now, it's still the best deal I ever did. It was a $180,000 deal. It was great, amazing. And at that point, I, you know, I felt like I had money to burn. But it cost me about eight thousand dollars a property, eight times five, is, yeah, to get the deal done. So it has to make sense financially, and has to have a really good specific reason why you might want to do that. So it's something to think about. Um, I hope this was helpful. I don't know how long I've been talking for. I really have no clue. I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are interested in uh, more information about one-on-one coaching I offer. I have a student who's really kicking ass. He's selling his second property, buying his third and fourth like in the next two weeks. Um, if you're interested in one-on-one coaching, go to coaching.howtoflipnewyork.com. If you are interested in a study at home co- uh, program I have, which I'm gonna change soon, um, go to uh, howtoflipnewyorkcourse.com, which is a horrible uh, name and I'm gonna change it. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes have really helped the algorithm, so more people liking, so it gets shown to more people. The more people like, and it gets shown again. I'm a lot more people have been seeing my videos lately, and thank you all for likes. And please keep the comments coming. I post five times a week. I usually do not do not know what to say. Right? Sometimes something's going on, and I will get into it. But very often, I'm like, I don't know what to talk about now. It's really my own BS in my head, right? Because I should talk about the same things. Because the chance of you watching every one of my videos is about zero, right? But if I talked about something three months ago, I feel like I just spoke about it and I can't believe I'm going to talk about it again. But the truth is, if you want to hear things like that, you want any any questions you have, just put in the comments what you want. The comments do not, any question you have does not have to be about the, the video you're watching. You could ask anything you want. Right? I try to get back to all uh, comments and questions within a day. Um, I think this one came yesterday. And... Um, you can ask anything. If it's a simple answer, I might just reply with an answer. If I don't understand it, I might reply with, I don't understand. Please elaborate. Um, and if it's something I've covered recently or in depth, I might send you links to a video or videos on it. We cannot drive in that lane. Um,